Taking a quick look at this portable power station from Phileco, and this thing has a special feature <laughs> right there. Super quiet. And how quiet? Uh, well, how about no noise? <laughs> How's that? Now, how are they achieving that? Right there, no fans. So there's no fans with this unit. Now you might be saying that doesn't sound like the greatest idea, but actually they've kind of done a lot of other things to try to keep these units cool. So number one, and th by the way, this is the Ampro 300. This is a unit that I actually own, so I am pretty familiar with this. Um, this was just a little 300 watt hour NMC power station. But again, it was, I think it's been made by the same manufacturer. You know, I actually, I couldn't even find that one now. It looks like they're selling it under the Shine Giant name. But, um, but yeah, so this Phileco probably being made by that same company. It's just a newer upgraded model. Um, but yeah, so anyways, these models, they all have this aluminum uh, body that kind of wraps around. It's, it's like the entire body, right? It wraps around at like 360 degrees. I've talked about this. Uh, aluminum is just great for passive cooling because it's just going to dissipate the heat. It transfers the heat to the outside environment. So, you know, that definitely helps, but it's, it's not going to, you know, <laughs> that alone is not going to keep these units cool. So this is interesting. This, this image here basically shows the secrets, <laughs> the secrets here. And as you can see here, uh, if you're familiar with these power stations, this, you know, <laughs> you're probably looking at this like, uh, what the heck? So yeah, the batteries actually sit on top of the inverters, like the inverters, the heat sinks, converters, everything that produces a lot of heat, <laughs> you know, um, the batteries are sitting on top of that. So they have actually decided to use the batteries themselves as like a heat sink. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that, this could be either be like a genius move or the dumbest thing ever, right? Um, especially, as I mentioned, these older models use NMC uh, cells as well, which you definitely don't want to heat those things up. So, um, but this new model, you know, LFP cells, they can handle higher temperatures better. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they're onto something here. And these batteries, you know, there's, there's just a lot of material here, right? So these could definitely function as a, as a heat sink. Now, as I mentioned in some of my videos about the Ampro 300, you, you, you know, if you're using this thing in warm environments, you're going to have to take, you have to take the cooling into your own hands, right? And since you've got aluminum, like that wraps around, even on the bottom, you know, maybe try to elevate the units. Uh, to get some airflow under the the unit itself too as well. I've talked about using dumbbells. I had a viewer mention using some bricks. You know, just get it up. <laughs> or, you know, if you're using these units in cooler environments, it's not going to be so much of an issue, right? So, and in fact, if you're using these things in like really cold environments, the heat coming off of the, the inverters and stuff, if you're using this thing, can actually help keep the batteries warm, which which might actually be a good thing. Now, unlike my Ampro 300, which only had a 300 watt uh, inverter on it, this thing actually gets pretty decent specs. So 1,000 watt uh, continuous, 2,000 watt surge. And so this is, you know, something that you can actually do a lot with, right? I've talked about this in my videos. If you get the right appliances for cooking, stuff like that, you can definitely find stuff that's below 1,000 watts and you can do all that. And, you know, you're combining this kind of larger inverter with this fanless design, right? So... Typically when you're using, you know, when you're outputting a high number of watts, big power, that's when those fans, you know, in most power stations come on, they start coming on real loud, right? So this is, this is interesting because you can actually power, you know, big time stuff with this thing and it's still not going to make any noise at all, right? Now, since we're looking at this image, let's just talk about the screen here real quick because this is one of the things I really liked about the amp road. Um, these numbers are just very large. You could read this thing from across the room, no problem. And really my favorite feature on the screen is, is the last two bars on this display, as you can see there. The second one is yellow, the last one is red, right? So this is just a great reminder <laughs> to charge the battery, right? Don't let, it, don't let it discharge all the way down to zero. I've talked about this, even with LFP batteries, you don't wanna do that and you definitely don't wanna let it sit at zero percent. So it's just, it's, a, you know, visually, it's just a good reminder. And even in fact, you know, if you don't know anything about power stations or batteries, when you see that, it's just kind of an intuitive thing, right? I mean, you see it turn yellow or, or, or just displaying red there, you know, you know, you, something's wrong, right? You got to charge it back up. So yeah, I wish more power stations would kind of just give a little bit more of a visual indicator about that. And then we do get a little bit of an update here from the Ampro 300. It looks like they've added a time remaining function there. Although they're using the same, you know, the same numbers as the input power. So I don't know how that works, but yeah, that's something that the Ampro didn't have. You know, the Ampro, it was just, 
input and then it was just output over there. But still, I guess, you know, now for some of the more disappointing parts of this unit, you know, the charging is not great. It's not great. They only mentioned the 200 watts there and it is using, you know, an old power brick as well. Now the Amphro 300 actually had like really good charging specs on it, but they have kind of tweaked the, the output ports and the charging, in fact, the input ports as well. And it's only 12 to 24 volts, you know, so <laughs> nothing special there. And then we do get a bunch of USBs, um, which, you know, I'm glad to see, but they did kind of change it up a little bit. Now, the, the main feature here is we do get a, a USB-C 100 watt, right? And then there's up here, for some reason, there's the other one, the 25 watt and a bunch of quick charges as well. But there's no mention about any of these being in or out. So that's where the amp road, the amp road had like incredible charging specs, really. It was only 300 watt hour and you could charge it up to 200 watts from like a ton of different, different ways of charging it, including it had dual 100 watt MPPTs. So you could double that to 200 watts. It had a charger on the back as well. And then you could do like, um, what is this one over here actually? You could do in and out on the USB as well too. And this unit does have a light on the back. So the amp road had lights on the front and the back. Another thing I just loved about that unit. But, but yeah, we still get that uh, panel light on the back. And they do mention high and low brightness settings as, as well. So yeah, it's just a quick look at this Phileco portable power station. And this is interesting, right? This, this could be appealing if you're looking at, you know, using a power station in like a small confined area, like a little camper or, or even a small RV. And, you know, <laughs> the fan noise is just really irritating, really annoying. This might be something you want to consider, right? So hopefully you just kind of found this video helpful, interesting. And yeah, thanks for watching.